to be with you. Uh, this invitation was practically irresistible. As I was just mentioning, uh, I live in Michigan, where uh, speaking to my wife this morning, she told me it was about 35 degrees or so, or 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, it's much nicer to, hear, to be here. Those a couple of people in the front said, this is cold to you? What? This is great. I wish Michigan could be like this. 12 months a year. But uh, it's, it, it is a pleasure to be here. I, I, I was here once before on a, a part of a vacation. It must be close to 15 years ago, so it's a pleasure to be back. Uh, as was mentioned in the, the brief uh, introductory comment, uh, I'm coming out with a book, uh, actually in February, uh, called Political Economy, Public Policy, and Monetary Economics. And uh, most of it is about the ideas of a group of economists who are known as the Austrian economists. Just because of the accident and circumstances, uh, a large number of them came from Austria and Europe. Um, and what I wanted to spend a little bit of time with you today is to, in a sense, uh, talk about some of their ideas in the context of uh, the current economic crisis. And this is current economic crisis that is affecting all of us. I don't need to tell you, uh, living in a relatively small island nation, um, that we are an interdependent world. You depend upon foreign visitors, as tourists to a great extent, and foreign investors to help uh, the economy grow uh, domestically. Uh, you feel the effects of changes around the global economy. Tourists uh, do not have the financial means to uh, take holidays as frequently or for as long. Foreign investment perhaps does not flow in uh, as frequently or with the magnitude that they had. We live in an interdependent world. And therefore, while the recession has centered in the United States, has obviously impacted, uh, uh, as the media tells us, Europe and parts of Asia, the fact is that uh, we are in a global economy. The question is then, uh, how does such a global crisis arise? How has this come about? If you follow a good part of the news media, uh, and I assume you get the similar coverage here, a lot of people have talked about the crisis of capitalism, a failure of the global market economy, instability in a free-wielding, unregulated arena of financial markets. And of course, the conclusion, the policy prescription, if you will, is that therefore it is necessary, desirable, um, and imperative that government, both in the United States and Europe and indeed globally, now attempt to compensate for what they were said to be these instabilities or shortcomings in the market economy, and to introduce regulations, controls, interventions, supposedly to assure that the world economy can be restored to some balance and sustainable growth, and to prevent the type of problems that occur. And what I want to do, spending my few moments with you today, uh, is to give a different view of this. That in fact, uh, to sort of tell you where I'm going and then try to explain the logic of how I get there, uh, I'm going to argue that in fact the current economic crisis that the United States, Europe, the rest of the world uh, is experiencing is not the fault of, has not been caused by, the failure of capitalism or open competitive markets. Uh, and it's not caused by the increasingly global uh, market. That it indeed, the very problems that we're facing today have been caused by various forms of government intervention, regulation, and intrusion into what normally would be a functioning and relatively uh, uh, crisis uh, uh, protected market environment. So let me start off with some fundamentals. I gather that while a good number of you are majoring in accounting or related fields, all of you have had at least a little bit of economics, uh, principles of macroeconomics, principles of microeconomics. So therefore, I could presume that you at least have sort of a rudimentary understanding of the nature of market supply and demand, uh, how prices equilibrate supply and demand, and so on. So uh, taking that knowledge on your part for granted, uh, let me sort of uh, start to the story and remind you of the nature of how markets work. Uh, modern economics, as I'm sure at least some of you have been told, began with a Scotsman uh, named Adam Smith. 
who in the last decades of the 18th century wrote a famous book called The Wealth of Nations that was published in March of 1776. And he lived in a world of significant government controls and regulations. His attempt in this book was to demonstrate that the wealth and prosperity of nations was not dependent upon such government regulations and controls and interventions. And that, in fact, these types of controls and regulations and interventions were retarding or preventing society from being as prosperous as it could be. Now, the logic of his starts out very simple. He basically begins his book with a chapter trying to explain the logic of division of labor. Something, again, if you've had principles of microeconomics, all of you should, in some general sense, understand. When man tries to produce everything for himself, his standard of living will be rather low. His mental skills, his physical abilities are limited. The accident of where he is, was born and where he's living uh, confines him to the available resources and raw materials that are generally around himself. But, Smith says, that when men learn to collaborate and associate for a system of division of labor, soon they see that they can enhance their productive abilities. Uh, one man becomes the butcher, the other becomes the baker, a third one the candlestick maker. And each person, by specializing in what he can do best, and trading his specialization to what others have for sale in the marketplace, means that he now has available skills, abilities, resource capacities, far beyond what would have been owned, his own, if he had been all alone, isolated, on an island by himself, having to do all the production and effort to meet his own needs. Now the division of labor grows and expands, and the specialization that occurs with it brings about an interesting situation. We increasingly become interdependent. On an island community such as yours, you produce some things for yourself, but a lot of things are imported into the Bahamas. Indeed, a vast majority of goods and services, resources, raw materials are imported that just because of the accident of geography, you do not have available in the islands here. And if you did not have access to them through international commerce and trade, your standards of living, the varieties and the qualities of the goods and services at your disposal would be a lot narrower if you were dependent upon self-sufficient production. And over time, we are all interdependent. You know, it's almost like a joke or a caricature in the United States that you go into any store and invariably if you look at the label where the, the commodity or product was made, it says made in China. Some Americans wonder if anything is made anywhere except in China anymore. But the fact is that shows the interdependency of nations. Not only you buy a lot uh, from other countries, but even the United States is dependent upon its international trading partners from countries such as China. Now, if we are now in a global economy of division of labor, specializing in different tasks of providing goods, resources, services, investments, how do we all communicate and exchange with each other? If you think of the number of people that you personally know and compare that to all the people in the world who in one way or another you are indirectly dependent upon, you virtually know nobody. Your clothes may be imported, a good part of your food might be imported, many of the resources or raw materials that are going to that construction site there are imported. How do you communicate with all of the other producers, suppliers, manufacturers, who could do things for you here in the Bahamas, but who are situated somewhere else around the globe? And how do they find out what you want? and what you could give them in trade in exchange for what you want from them. Now in fact, as a famous economist named Friedrich Hayek has emphasized, uh, he was the Nobel Prize winner in economics back in 1974, the means by which we communicate with each other is through a price system. It is not necessary for us to know each other, to directly share with everyone else in this now global division of labor who we are, what we specifically want resources or commodities or finished goods for. Nor is it necessary for all the other suppliers in the world 
to tell us about their personal abilities, characteristics,